from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. like Ida Fleming, who engaged Miss Mary to deliver her third child. People like Adam and Maribel Dudley, newcomers to Doherty County, who bring their troubles to this midwife. In the county health department are doctors and nurses who help Miss Mary do the job to which she and thousands of other midwives all over the South have dedicated their lives the birthing of healthy babies. I'm gonna hold you close to my heart now in that good mood. All these your babies, Miss Mary? Yes, these are all my babies. Delivered about 1,400. Kind of one come this year. Here's my two. I'm going to send you a real little baby picture, this next one, Miss Mary. Well, you do that thing, honey. Oh, that Ida. Ain't nothing bothering her now. But I remember four years ago, she was so scared. I had to take her to the clinic myself. Back in those days, our clinic was meeting at the old building. Dr. Andrew had been our health officer for, I guess, just about a year. Little Miss Dixon always try to help mamas feel easy the first time in the clinic. Of course, I foretold out already what they're going to do. How they take each mother's temperature and feel the pulse. Little Miss Dixon. Every time a mother comes to the clinic, they measure her blood pressure. That's another way they can tell if she's keeping in good shape. Or if she ain't. Things she had better do to get herself well. 
so she can have her baby more easy and normal. <laughs> I is doing just fine. The first visit, they draw off a little blood for a test, and in eight months, they do the same. That's to see if the mother need to take the treatment. Every time the mother comes to the clinic, she brings along a little bottle of her water for a urine test. That's to make sure that her kidneys is working all right. When our patient begin to check up early like Ida did, then we midwives ain't so apt to run up against something beyond our handling. Dr. Newton examined all the mothers the first time they come into the clinic, and again in eight months, and between times if they need it. When it come out, it's time for the doctor. She know it already, it wasn't nothing for her to be scared about. but you know the plenty now. Come on over, let's look at your baby things. ahead of time if I possibly can get to it. Of course, I know before I got here, and Matt and Ida would have everything fixed up nice.
As your health officer, it was my duty to find out why that baby died. My examination showed that his cord got infected, and you all know what that means. Something wasn't clean. Maybe the midwife didn't boil her scissors long enough. Or it could have been that the dressing she used wasn't sterile. Or it might have been that she got in a hurry and uh, didn't wash her hands well. Now, you midwives in this county have built up a wonderful reputation. You work hard, and I know how difficult it is to keep things clean in some of the homes where you have to go. That's right. But your record shows that you can keep clean. And when something like this happens, it's a warning to all of us, to us doctors, the nurses, as well as to you midwives. It shows us how very easily we can slip back when we get careless. I've been doing the same thing about 18 years, but I still know I can see it if I don't keep checking on myself. These young girls who are just starting out, they have an advantage because they're learning the right way at the beginning. But you know, folks can change too if they just put their mind to it. to me, you had to come on in the house out this cold wind. Hey, you in that truck, you just well come on in too. You people seem to be new around here to me. Yes, well, how far are you along with this pregnancy, honey? About six or seven months, I think. What did the doctor say about your case, honey? She ain't seen no doctor. Oh, well, before I can take her case, she'll have to see a doctor. She'll have to take a blood test and go through an examination. What's all that for? It's for the protection of her and also her baby. How you know but what she don't need treatments? Maybelle, is this your first baby? No, it ain't. Well, let's tell me, honey, how did you get along with all your pregnancies? Our first one come dead. The next one dropped before she got far along with it. Well, you just got to see a doctor. Maybell, I'll tell you what to do. Come on down to the clinic Friday morning, yeah? That's not going to hurt you. Cole's not. It's not going to hurt you. Y'all stop by for me. I'll go with you. Thank you, Miss Miller. I'll bring her by. All right. Dr. Newton said maybe they ain't been eating right, and it shows up on them. He says every mother ought to have a good examination all over as soon as she thinks she's pregnant. He said maybe they ought to start getting her checkup months ago. Poor Miss Penny sure got a problem on her hands. Yes, that was just my day for trouble. Another lady there just begging to be my patient. 
But I most know she needed the doctor. Dr. Newton said I was right about that thing, and he showed me a danger sign. Lady's been having sharp headaches all the time. The doctor said being pregnant right by itself is no cause for a healthy woman to feel all dizzy and drug out. Lady's ankle is all swelled up. That's another bad sign. In the clinic, they keep checking on three things. The patient's weight, her blood pressure, and her urine. This lady's clinic chart shows that she has been putting on too much weight, especially in the last two months. Her blood pressure has been going up likewise, way above what it ought to be. When they tested her urine, it showed up cloudy full of albumin, the doctor said. Instead of water clear, like a well mother's. After Dr. Newton got through explaining all of that, then the lady agreed herself it was better to let the doctor wait on her. But taking a look at all the mother that come to the clinic, them that have the trouble is very few. Now, the nurse is always advised with the patients on what to eat and how to take care of themselves. Miss Penny, she keeps a sharp eye out for the puny patients, like Maybell. And if they eat what she say, they mostly get along okay. Now, I just didn't know how many of them were living out there, 11 miles down that hard up road. Maybell done forgot what Miss Penny told her to eat. But you know it's hard to eat when you ain't hungry and by yourself all day long. myself to start to collecting up her baby things. But it looked like me, Bill, ain't thinking about nothing such as that. Still, it's hard to know just what a person got on his mind sometimes. Put a strong eye, but we'll be getting ready right quick. I need a little more water to wrench off my hands, Aunt Maddie.
that'll do fine. Let me see now. Bed made fresh, newspaper pads ready. I wish to goodness all my mothers could have everything fixed up this nice. I'll have to move the bed over to get down to that light. Baby tray fixed. Gonna move that table down this way to lay out my things on. Mm, even got the slop jar fixed on the paper. Oh, look at them pretty new shoes. Look like Tom done bought somebody a present. Let's see how you doing, Adam. You are fine, but it ain't no hurry. Watching the clock, honey. You are doing fine. You can walk around some if you want to. I remember Ida when I was having my third baby. That little old hard-headed boy, he weighed about a year. Get your bed moved over a little I don't want you to start the band down too soon, Ida. That'll get you all full out. Just relax yourself and don't think about nothing. I have known patients to drop right off the sleep between times and just sleep 
and sleep till the baby is almost here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shift over a little more, honey. This pad will keep the bed clean. There too when you feel one coming, honey. But pretty soon I want you to start pushing down and pant like a dog. <laughs> Remember now, that's to keep the baby's head from coming down too fast. What you want this time, Ida? Little girl or a boy? It don't make no difference to me.
we got us another healthy little old boy. Come on, boy, let's get some of that old stuff out you, where you can really raise a racket. Healthiest little old baby you ever saw. Yes, you is. Yes, you is. I want to get one more good tight time to make matter. A little old squirmy one. I believe he's going to be big and Tom Jr., Ida. <laughs> no, Ida, he's just a kicking. Act like he want to go places already. Hold still now, honey baby. I'm about ready to cut you loose. Out of what I'm putting on your baby's cord now is a star goes pad. Don't put anything else on here now. I'll be by tomorrow to check it to be sure it's all right. Warm up the blanket. Good night, Maddie. He'll be wanting it now, as soon as I get the drops in his eyes. Hold still now, you little scrummy, rummy. You'll soon be through. Tell me, Mama, who do it favor? It's too early to tell yet a while, honey. You just rest easy now, Ida. I want to make sure now the other breath is all here. See, ain't matter. I shape it up like this to see if it's all here. Because if any left inside the mother, she'll continue to bleed. Yes, it all come in one piece. Now you just rest back, Ida, until I clean you up a little bit. Feel that hard thing, Ida? 
that she won't. Do like you see me do every once in a while, and that'll keep you from bleeding so much. Remember what I told you the last time, Ida, about nursing your baby right off? That'll make your wound drop and you won't lose so much of blood. Yes, yeah, smart little old booger. He's catching on to the idea right quick. Aunt Maddie, come help me get all my old dirty stuff tied up in my gown. Just to go out to fix the clean bag tonight. Fix it early in the morning.
Oh, go away, man. I just now got in the bed. What you doing down on that floor? Ain't the baby come yet? Oh, man, you hush and go bring me some wood here and some water. Here for this fire. Good goodness, somebody not a thing to wake with. I'm sure glad I brought some newspaper and some clean rags along with me, Maybelle. Maybelle, I just can't deliver no baby on the floor now because it's too dangerous. Yes, I'm there. You'll find this a heap better anyway. I'm gonna get my things all boiled up, Maybelle, and then we'll be ready. Come on, honey, let's get in the bed. No, Miss Mary. And I don't uh, 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 this baby's uh, uh, coming dead anyway. Uh, come on, come on, let's get in the bed. Come on. It don't have to be dead, baby. I read it can be with her coming along so fast. Make a baby bed out that box. Get some use out of it anyway. I want you to go to the clinic and get me an incubator, quick. Did this one come dead too, Miss Mary? Dead? What do you think? Hurry now. Maybell, now the most important thing for you to do is to keep the baby warm. Don't handle him any more than you just fly. Hey, could I give you a hand with something? Yes, honey, you sure can. Maybell's gonna need something to eat directly, and I need a bite myself. Been on the go all night. 
Hi, Maybear. Isn't he cute? Don't get too close to it now. It's a primitive baby. <laughs> Miss Pitt, baby come too soon. Oh, Miss Penny, I'm glad you come. Let's put it at the foot of the bed, Adam, where it's out of the draft. Yes, ma'am. Got to keep this full of hot water all the time to keep this baby warm. Yes, ma'am, then I'd better go cut some more wood. Now I'm going and fix Maybell something to eat. That's a good idea. My, what a husky little peanut we have here. Alba Hood, you got a baby over your house. <laughs> Man, you heard right. There's nothing wrong with coffee and grits. But a mother should have milk and vegetables and meat from the first day on to be strong enough to take care of her little baby. I'll take care of her, Miss Penny, and see that she gets something. Baby Adam, come on over here and put your name on your baby's birth certificate. What you gonna call him, Adam Junior? I reckon. That baby's too little to live. Amy. Oh, no, honey. <laughs> Next morning, I go to see how I and her baby get along. Look like everything's fine with Ida. And lo, that baby a healthy little old thing as you ever saw. Yes, he is. Miss Penny come to see about Ida and her new baby, too. And Maddie's kind of got old-fashioned ideas. Thanks, mamas can't eat things like meat and greens. Miss Penny said mamas can eat anything after the babies come that didn't hurt them before the baby come. And they feel better for it, too. Baby's cold done okay. Most of my patients have learned by now, you don't put on anything but a sterile dressing. No grease, no powder. Cold's dry up best that way and keeps a lot cleaner.
When Ida come for her six weeks checkup, maybe I was there too. Poor girl, I felt that sorry for her. Ida just kept bragging about that young one, and all the time Maybell just kept looking and thinking about hers. Dr. Newton always checks our mothers, makes sure that they didn't have no tears, and that the wounds is all right. The doctor said Maybelle's coming along just fine and look like she's been eating better, too. Still, Dr. Newton knew something else had been troubling Maybelle this time. But, Lord, that girl had no call to fret herself. Cause in four months' time, her Adam Jr. had grown out to be as pretty a baby as you ever saw. I bet you're proud of that bitty baby, Miss Mary. Why, Ida, I'm proud of all my babies. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.